Thank you for joining us. We are the Arts Council for Long Beach. Today we are going to be going over the California Creative Core Technical Assistance Artist Application. Presenting is Lisa DeSmith, Director of Programs, and Sergio Alan Diaz, Programs Associate, and I am Judy Estrada, the Communications Manager. Our mission here at the Arts Council for Long Beach cultivates the physical, social, and economic characteristics of the Long Beach neighborhoods by nurturing and, and enlivening the arts. Our vision at the Arts Council for Long Beach, we envision a thriving Long Beach that benefits from universal participation in the arts. A little bit about us, we serve individuals, groups, and organizations through advocacy, arts education, public art, and grant making within the city of Long Beach. We practice profound inclusion as a collaborator and convener for the benefit of all communities. Before we get started, all questions will be answered through the question button. If you can locate that question button, it's on the bottom portion of your screen. It'll have a little comment, it'll comment icon that looks like this. Feel free to ask questions through that question button. And thank you to those of you who have asked questions. And also feel free to use the reaction buttons, which are, which are also located on the bottom portion of your Zoom screen next to the question button. And with that, I'll pass it over to Lisa. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining our Artist Technical Assistance Workshop for the Creative Core. Um, the question section was really active and I'm excited to be able to answer a lot of your questions. I know everybody has lots of questions about some of the changes and we'll be going over that. Um, we are going to be recording this and putting it on our YouTube channel. So it'll be available for everybody after this if you need to hop off or if you have a friend that couldn't attend, we will be recording this. Um, and so we we thank you for your participation. <laughs> we we want to talk a little bit about the program, do an overview, and then we're going to really do a deep dive into the application and provide um, really detailed instructions on how to fill it out with our, our grants platform. And then we're going to be doing another workshop next week that's going to deep dive into the budget portion of it and artistic documentation. So this is going to be kind of more technical, um, an overview of the program with some of the changes. And um, next week will be specific about budget and artistic documentation. And we will be recording that as well. Next slide, please. So um, a little bit about the Creative Core program. So the Arts Council is one of several administrating organizations. Um, within Los Angeles and Orange County, there are, are several, there, it's all across the state. So we are not are not the only administrating organization for the Creative Core program. Um, there's two other administrating organizations within Los Angeles and Orange County, and you're welcome. I know one of the applications has already closed, but um, Community Partners is also opening their application. So there are multiple open applications and there's statewide ones as well. So um, we encourage you to check out our, our partners who are other administrating organizations as we're not the only ones. However, you will only be able to accept one award if you do apply to multiple organizations. So keep that in mind when you're applying and every organization has a different timeline. So um, strategically, you may not hear back from one of the organizations should you get accepted. Um, after your application. Next slide, please. <laughs> so what is the Creative Core program? The California Arts Council um, started the Creative Core program and it's a one-time $60 million all allocation from the California Arts Council. And again, as we said, it's being administered by several organizations in the region. So that 60 million is split up between all, I believe it's 14 administering organizations. Um, and the purpose is really to be able to um, bring artists funding, direct funding in communities and have artists work within communities. Next slide, please. 
So um, what are the priorities of the Creative Core program? It's for artists and nonprofit organizations who address the following topics. So think about this in your application of how your work as an artist addresses public health awareness and messages to stop the spread of COVID-19, public awareness related to water and energy conservation, climate mitigation and energy preparedness, relief and recovery, civic engagement, including election participation and social justice and community engagement. So we want um, your proposed project to hit one of these um, key areas. And so organizations must be located in, work with or serve the areas in Los Angeles or Orange County with the lowest quadrile as listed in the Healthy Places Index. And um, we're gonna do a little deep dive into the Healthy Places Index, um, I think in the next slide, but first we wanna just talk a little bit about the community-based organizations and then we'll dive a little bit more into the Healthy Places Index and talk about that. So we um, closed our application for the community-based organizations and those organizations applied to collaborate with an art artist. So those organizations basically said, I'm interested in hosting an artist for one year for an artist residency program and I'm open to what that artist may bring to the table. And we're gonna be working matchmaking to pair artists. Um, so I know a lot of the questions are about the organizations. Originally we had, um, artists selecting the organization before applying, we're going to be changing that timeline a little bit where um, we're still in the process of reviewing those applications. And I'll get into that in another slide. We received a, a, a huge amount of applications, more than we anticipated. So we are really taking our time going through them and had to push back that process a little bit. Um, so no organizations have been selected yet. We're still in the grants review process right now. Um, and those organizations we anticipate in early May to be able to um, give them to announce those to the organizations. Next slide, please. So those nonprofits needed to be a nonprofit organization fo focusing on their communities, community-centered organizations, social service organizations, culture organizations, health-centered organizations, environmentally focused or promoting social justice, and they need to have strong ties to their communities. They need to either be a 501c3 or have a fiscal sponsor agreement. And it was open to small, medium, and large organizations. So we received 90 organization applications. 55% um, were from Long Beach, 11% from Orange County, and 33% from Los Angeles County, greater excluding Long Beach. Um, so this is kind of a snapshot of the applications. Um, as I said before, we're still in the review process. Um, no organizations have been selected at this point. So um, as artists, you're interested in working with one of these organizations. So we've we've changed the process a little bit so that we can open up this artist application and not delay the process at all. So the deadline is May 15th. We are going to open the application tomorrow afternoon. So make sure you're signed up on our website to get the notification of when it's open. Um, we just wanted to make a few tweaks and make sure that it's ready. Um, and we will be opening it up tomorrow afternoon. And so um, as an artist, you're saying that you wanna collaborate with an organization. If you're selected, you'll receive a $50,000 grant in addition to professional development and funding for the project itself um, for costs. So to be eligible, you must be either Los Angeles or Orange County based and have documentation showing your residence in Los Angeles or Orange County and or your work with Los Angeles or Orange County residents will be required. So um, we will be confirming all of that in the application. We do ask for your address. Uh, if you could go back, Judy, please, to that slide. Um, so make sure that if um, it, we will be following up if your address does not show that it's Los Angeles or Orange County based in the application, we will need to get some sort of documentation of how you're working with Los Angeles or Orange County residents. So we will probably be following up with that if, if it's not obvious within the application. Um, and then we will also be requiring um, documentation later on in the process if you're selected, such as a California driver's license or some sort of identification showing residence. 
Um, so artists must be located in, work with, or serve the areas with the lowest quadrile of the Healthy Places Index. And so, um, Judy, if you could stop sharing, and Sergio is going to do a little deep dive into the Healthy Places Index and how to check um, for your location. Yeah, thanks, Lisa. Hi, everybody. As Lisa mentioned, I'll be going over the Healthy Places Index. I'll go ahead and drop the link uh, to the map in the chat if everybody wants to follow along. Um, so I'm going to share my screen as well. So this is the California Healthy Places Index map. Um, as you can see, uh, the state of California is broken up into uh, four quartiles uh, between green, light green, light blue, and dark blue, each representing 25%. Um, so this is something that we'll be using to determine um, your eligibility. And by doing that, we go ahead and type in the zip code that you provide in your application. So as mentioned, you have to uh, be located in, work with, or serve the lowest quartile, which would be this blue region right here. So I'll go ahead and type in a zip code that I know is located within that lowest quartile. Um, and this is 90805 in Long Beach. So this is one way that you'll know that you're located in, work with, or serve that lowest quartile is that if by typing in your zip code, it leads you to this dark blue area. So for example, say that you type in 90712, um, this is actually within the 50 to 75% range. So if you as the artist are located in that area, you don't qualify, or if you work with people or serve that area, you wouldn't qualify. Um, but if you do work with, say you are located within 90712, but work with people within 90805, then you would qualify. Um, so that's one way to do this. Um, I wouldn't recommend really editing your display as it kind of resets every time you put in a new zip code. Um, so it's just best to type in the zip code, uh, locate yourself, and then make sure that you're located within that light blue. Um, you could also look at different data, but the most useful would be the, the zip code. And you have different tools here too, if you're more interested, but that's primarily the main thing that, that you'll be using, just typing in your zip code. And we wanna make sure that you're within the dark blue of that 25%. <clears throat> and um, so again, we'll, when we show the application and, and do a deep dive, we'll show you how we're gonna be determining that. So think about that when you're filling out the application. And if it is the case where you don't live in that area and you wanna show that you either work with or serve, um, we may be following up with additional questions, but there are places to indicate that within the application as well. So we'll show that um, if it if it does happen that you aren't actually located with the, your physical address isn't located. Um, so Judy, we can switch back to the presentation now. Um, I see a question from Tiffany asking about the colors and how does it scale? So the Healthy Places Index um, is not a tool that we created. It was a, a separate tool. And so it's using um, mostly census tract data and other forms of data collection to um, find out what areas are. Um, so the, the dark blue is the lowest 25 percentile, meaning that those are the lowest resourced areas um, and needing the most assistance. And so that's why um, this grant is specifically targeted to those areas. And these are the guidelines as laid out by the California Arts Council that, like I said, this is not our, um, our map or our presentation. Um, I hope that answers your question. If you could follow up with, if, the, if there's additional um, question that you needed for that. Okay, so um, some key dates as we're going through. So today is the artist workshop, April 26th. Next week, we're going to be doing budget and documentation workshop. The deadline is May 15th. And then the projects, if, if you are selected, will be taking place from July 2023 to June 2024. 
And um, we did do a virtual technical assistance workshop that deep dives into the whole program that's on our YouTube channel. So you're welcome to check that out as well if you missed that um, workshop already. Again, just um, we'd love it if you could attend next week as well. We will be recording that and putting it putting both of these on our YouTube channel. So please join us next week as well. And um, I think we can, we also wanted to share with everybody before we deep dive into the application, a couple of other events. Um, so tomorrow we have the closing reception for our professional artist fellows at the Village and King Library. So we're gonna be tabling from three to 7 p.m. at the library. Um, so come check it out, come talk to us. If you have more questions, we'll be there. Um, Sergio and I will be there specifically, and we'd love it if you could see the fellows from last year and, and check that out. And then um, another one of our partnerships is with Go Make Something Kids. So we will be also at the Long Beach City College um, Art Gallery on Saturday from 11 a.m. to 3. So that's another opportunity if you want to come talk to us, check out some of the work that we're doing in the community and um, get some questions answered individually. And so um, now we're going to really do a deep dive into the application and provide some technical assistance um, on how to fill out this application. We are using a new grants management system and um, we wanna make sure that everybody has the most success possible with this application. So um, we're gonna get that up right now and just kind of show you what the application looks like on the back end. So before you get to the application, you will be asked to sign up um, as a user. And so it's really important so this is kind of the page that you'll come to after you sign up as a user. One of the most common questions that we've been getting is, I can't sign up, I'm, I, I'm not getting my account registration. It will send you a confirmation email to be able to register. So make sure that you're checking your spam, make sure that your email is correct. Those That's been kind of a common thing that's come up is that the confirmation email is showing up in spam or something like that has happened. So um, that's the first step. And then you'll come to this step. So this is the verification for eligibility. So do you reside in Los Angeles or Orange County and or demonstrate significant work um, with Los Angeles or Orange County residents? So I think this is obvious <laughs> from the presentation that if you hit yes, you'll be able to move on. If you hit no, it'll kick you out and you won't be able to fill out the application. Um, and then it asks, are you an individual artist, an artist cohort, which is defined as up to eight art artists, such as performing artists. So if you click either of those, you'll be able to move on. If it says, are you a nonprofit organization? No, because we already did that application. Or an artist cohort uh, with nine or more artists? No, because we're keeping this, we're defining a cohort as up to eight. So those two answers, um, you will not be able to move forward with the application. <clears throat> And then, um, so we're gonna select an individual artist. Um, so, sorry, I can't see the question. Can you move your cursor? Um, there we go. Are you and or your cohort located, work with or serve areas in the lowest quadrile? So that's where you're gonna verify. The link is there for the Healthy Places Index. Um, so, you're gonna to wanna to click yes to be able to proceed. If, if your answer is no and you have questions, please reach out to us um, so that we can discuss it. We don't wanna discourage anybody from applying. So if it's turning out that you are searching and, and you're not coming up with being in that lowest quadrile, please reach out to us and we will um, see if there's a, a way that you qualify. And then you cannot be an active employee, board member, or contractor of the Arts Council for Long Beach. So you would um, select no on that question to move on with the application. And if there's any eligibility questions, feel free to reach out to us at the grants email. 
So this is where um, some of those questions that we talked about, like your address is going to be really important because um, we are going to be using that postal code number to verify the Healthy Places Index there. So that's the first level. And if it turns out that your um, address location doesn't verify, we'll be looking for other indicators that you are eligible. So next, we're going to be um, asking for your artistic statement and your vision as an artist. Uh, we want you to describe your philosophy. Um, in your, so this is just a typical artist statement. What are your short and long-term goals as an artist? And how will you grow as an artist as a result of this program um, as, a, as a part of this? And there'll be professional development. So we really want to hear it. This is your opportunity to tell us about yourself as an artist and what you hope to get from this program. We do have an optional section for traditional or folk artists if you'd like to provide some context onto your practice. Um, so feel free to fill that out if you identify that way. Um, and who is your target HPI audience and or community? So this is where we're going to be getting into um, who, who you want to work with and what areas. Um, so like, let's say that you do not live in that quadrile. This is where you might indicate a community that you've worked with before or an audience that um, you have ties to that you may want to work with. Um, and you can indicate that there. So um, please provide zip codes in this area so that we can look into it and verify it. We may need to do additional follow-up as well. And then um, please provide your statement describing how you work towards arts equity and cultural inclusion in your practice. Um, so this, so you don't need to answer this verbatim, but as a guideline, how are you engaging Los Angeles and Orange County residents through both traditional and non-traditional methods? taking into account language barriers, geographical concerns, and economic divides um, <clears throat> that require different outreach. How do you work to reach new audience and participants, including those in communities of color, low-income communities, LGBTQIA+, um, disabled communities, and other communities that experience barriers to arts participation? And how are you as an artist working towards creative strategies to develop innovative solutions to social change. So it's possible that um, this may be the section where you talk about your work um, with that lowest quadrilla of the Healthy Places Index too. So it doesn't necessarily need to be limited to your address. And so we are asking for a proposed project. Um, so you do not need to, originally we were gonna have um, artists select an organization to work with. We've changed the design of the program a bit. So this is a this is just a, an early stage vision. This doesn't need to be a concrete, really planned out project. This is just how, how could you as an artist envision working with a nonprofit? Um, and so you don't need to have a specific nonprofit. It's just what can you envision doing? So um, if you're say, I'm just going to throw out like a filmmaker. You could say, you know, maybe you wanted to document the nonprofit or that there's so many different ways that you could could approach this. But this is where you're going to kind of talk about your project and how you think that you might be able to work with a nonprofit. Once the nonprofits are selected, you will have an opportunity to select um, top nonprofits that you would like to work with. So you'll still have some um, autonomy in being able to select which nonprofits you would like. There's no guarantee that you'll be paired if you're selected, but um, you'll be able to indicate your preferences. And then describe the feasibility, sorry. <laughs> Go back. Describe the feasibility of successful completion of your project. So we really wanna know um, how, are you, how do you plan to make this happen? Is it actually feasible? And then, um, the last part is attachments, or did we get everything there? So this is really important when you're attaching your resume and CV, your letters of recommendation. Um, so when you hit uh, choose file,
you want to make sure that you hit upload as well. And um, these are required fields. So if it doesn't successfully attach, it won't let you submit the application. So it's really important to make sure you hit upload. <clears throat> you want to scroll down. And then um, artistic documentation. We're asking for work samples and marketing materials. So we're asking for one PDF of each. And um, I, Sergio had an example of what that might look like for different types, different genres of art. Yeah, give me one sec to pull it up. I think a great way to do this portion of the application uh, would be to create a Google Doc and upload your images on here. So for example, I have some of my past work. So I have my JPEG here that I embedded into the Google Doc. I did sample one, the title, the year, and what the medium is. And so we're asking for two samples of artistic documentation. So you, if it's a visual, you could go ahead and actually just put the the actual image there. So if it's a digital photograph, a film photograph, uh, a scan of a painting, uh, so on and so forth. But if you work within others that it's not so visual, um, or rather it can't just be seen on the dock, you could go ahead and link it such as a video um, or an audio track or just some specific audio that you have. And we also have the format that we would like you all to submit. So uh, the title and then the video link if it's a video or the title and the audio link if it's an audio. Um, and a great way to just make it a PDF is by going to file, uh, download, and then hitting PDF. And from there, you'll be able to save it as a PDF and um, it all just saves as one thing. And um, like I said, next week, we're going to be deep diving a little bit more into documentation and also the marketing materials and showing um, some examples of what, uh, what successful marketing and documentation materials look like. So um, please stay tuned for that. In addition, we will be launching um, some one-on-ones with um, local artists who are gonna be able to give some instruction um, to be able to take photographs and headshots of your work to help you with the application if that's something that you don't have. So there'll be some limited appointments that folks can set up to get some headshots done and photographs of work. And then additionally, one-on-ones um, -on -ones with um, professional writers who can help with your um, artist statement and also with your resume and CV and provide some feedback on that. So we'll be launching those appointments soon. Make sure you're signed up for the updates for that. It looks like we have a few questions. Um, I think <laughs> if it's all right, we'll answer those. I just want to finish. We're almost done with the application okay. and then we can um, go ahead and answer some of those questions. So you'll, um, you'll submit all of this and then you will have an opportunity to um, review your application as well. And um, make sure that it, so you do need to hit submit. That submit button absolutely needs to be hit. But also, please make sure that you get a confirmation email. If you do not, please follow up with us because we have had um, people that thought that they submitted, but they didn't actually submit. So if you do not get a confirmation email right away, please, please, please follow up with us so we can figure out what's going on with that. Because um, sometimes it's that the submit button wasn't actually hit or something ha something happens. Um, so we want to make sure that everybody successfully gets that email confirmation into their email box. And you can also do save and finish later. Another um, thing that's happened is that when people do save and finish later, you will get an email. You want to make sure that you're accessing it from, from your email and not just going back to the application because it won't show your your what you're doing. You have to go to the link that's in your email for that. So that's a common um, issue that's happened where people are going back to the general application and it's not showing their work and they're kind of freaking out like, oh my gosh, I did all this and it's not showing up, but you have to access it from the link that's in your email. 
Um, I think that's everything for the application. So now we can take some questions. Looks like the first question we have is from Franklin Sims. The grant guidelines show a 30 point rubric used by the review panel. Is that still the rubric that will be used? Yes, we did make some very slight changes to that rubric. It'll still be the 30 points. We've updated our guidelines on the website. So the new guidelines are up there. Um, and the only thing that we've taken out on the rubric is any mention of the organization. But other than that, the rubric is still the same. Okay. Next, we have from Pat Shang. Our group applying is the new nine, which has nine performers. Does this mean we're ineligible for the grant? The group is led, managed by just two of us. I think um, if we can chat after this, Pat, and, and um, get some more information about the group, um, I think we need a little bit more information to find out um, about that. OK. Next, we have from David George. Are you able to show or explain an example of marking materials? Yeah, I could. I think I could go ahead and speak on that. Um, so it would be very similar to the artistic documentation in terms of the different formats that you promote your material in. So if you have any flyers or any actual visuals that you've shared on social media, you could go ahead and embed them as uh, JPEGs or PNGs into your actual Google Doc. Uh, as well, if you have any actual videos for social promotion or just promoting your material, such as online, YouTube, or any other platforms that you use to store videos, or even at your drive, if you want to share the link that's uh, accessible to us, you could go ahead and do that as well. Um, so it would be basically the same thing, uh, providing context to it by providing a title, then linking to it. And so also, if you're using audio as promotion, also linking that audio there, if it's like a you know, SoundCloud podcast or Spotify, Apple Music, stuff like that, uh, go ahead and write that title and, and link it there as well. So it's a very similar format. Um, we'll, I'll be creating that as well um, so that it could be available um, in a similar fashion as this. And we'll be deep diving into this next week. So if you want to get more samples, um, more ideas of, you know, what makes good artistic documentation and marking materials, we'll go deeper into that. And I think one more um, option would be, let's say that you receive some press on something, maybe including a link to that press um, article would be good. Um, but we'll, again, we'll deep dive more into that next week. Okay, next we have from Shatira Ray. Would it be a conflict of interest if one of the partnering organizations is one we, re we may receive a recommendation from? No, that's not a conflict of interest. That's that's more than welcome. Um, so please, um, please feel free to move forward with that. Okay. Next, we have David George. When you say submit for notifications, is that the artist registry? And no, that's the notification button. I will put that in the chat right now. Yeah, the artist registry is separate from this application um, because this application is open to Orange County and LA County artists. We are not requiring um, artists to be registered on our registry because it's a Long Beach registry. Okay. Next we have about the percentiles. Is it only the dark blue or also the light blue? It's only the dark blue, so the lowest 25%. Next, can you talk about who is able to give a letter of rec? Can the people be artists in general in various fields and stages of their career? Um, I believe that's more than fine to have an artist make a recommendation. I think, um, you know, anybody who's familiar with your work as an artist, uh, really the point of the letter of recommendation is to show that you've um, been able to fulfill past projects and um, somebody's vouching for you. It's almost like a work letter of recommendation. Um, <laughs> I think that, um, you know, if you can get a letter of recommendation from a venue or 
something that shows that you're able to also work with, you know, other groups or nonprofits more than just artists might be helpful, just so that you can show um, past experience that might be relevant to the program, but it's not necessary. Okay, great. Uh, next question is, if this is a project I'm working on myself, but would like to bring others into assist, would I have to submit as a cohort rather than an individual? So that depends on how you want to structure it. So um, this may be something that we go into a little bit more within the budget. And I would I would think about um, how their involvement will be with the project. Like, so is are they a key person within the project? <coughs> Excuse me. Or is it, um, you know, you're bringing somebody in for like a one day workshop if that's if that's the latter case where it's just you know minimal involvement, um, I would just apply with yourself as an artist. Where but whereas if it's really like these artists are going to be equally as much participating as you, um, I would bring it in as a cohort. But just remember that you know that fifty thousand dollar grant is going to be divided among the cohort. So thinking about how you want to structure your project and what that might look like. Um, there will be room in the budget for um, for costs associated with the project. So if it's something where you're bringing in an artist for, say, like a one day performance or something like that as part of the project, that might be something that you put in your project budget as opposed to like you yourself are doing most of the work as an artist um, and maybe don't want to have to split that funding uh, among multiple folks. But if it's really like this is a cohort, you guys are all working together, you guys are all dedicating time to the project, then I would apply as a cohort. So it's really up to you how you want to do that. Okay. And next, so the marketing sample, the marketing samples will be for previous projects and not the proposed project. That's correct. Okay. Next question, if you have a specific organization that you would like to work with and have worked with, would you suggest focusing our answers to that org or would you suggest answering more broadly? Um, I think it's going to be hard to guarantee that you will be paired with that org. I think it's okay to mention the organization that you originally envisioned it to be with this org, but just make sure that the answer could be adapted to other organizations, just in case, um, for example, that org that you wanna work with maybe isn't one of the 30 that's selected, um, uh, or it's not feasible with that particular org so that the project could be adapted to other organizations. Okay. And if you have a follow-up question, feel free to stick it in the question and answer. We'll get to it. Next question is, can you have a letter of rec from an org or school you work with and not only an artist rec? Absolutely. I would highly recommend, recommend having um, an, a recommendation from an organization or school. Next question, if a person is a part-time employee of an organization, can they still be accepted and placed at that site? I'm going to say no to that. Um, the California Arts Council is really specific about wanting the funds to be distributed um, to as many people as possible. So if the organization is already receiving funding, probably would not be eligible, but I would like to um, reach out to the California Arts Council and, and get more clarification on that. Um, I don't think we've had that specific question come up, so um, probably not, but let me reach out to them and, and double check. Next question is, would community orgs be able to count as a letter of rec? if one has worked with them artistically or in terms of greater work experience? Absolutely, community orgs definitely would be a great um, source for a letter of recommendation. Great. And lastly, if my genre is dance and I would be utilizing dancers, what would you suggest when applying, cohort or individual? 
So again, I think it comes down to, do you want to split that 50,000 with, um, with everybody, or do you want to hire dancers as part of your project budget? So it really, it really is um, up to you how you want to structure that. So it'd be if you if they are going to bring all the dancers in as part, they would have to organize a little bit more. Um, so if it was like the dancers were all equal equal uh, participants, you know, then I would structure it as a cohort because that's that pot of money is going to be split between everybody. Um, but if it's more like the dancers will come in here and there, then that could be part of the project budget. Great. And we have another question. I don't live in the lowest HPI scored area, but have historically worked with communities and nonprofits that do or serve those that do. Is there a way to document this or ensure I will be placed with a nonprofit that serves a community with the lowest HPI scored area? So yeah, I think you definitely want to address um, what communities and nonprofits you have served and worked with in the past in order to be eligible. And um, all of the organizations that are going to be selected are going to be in that lowest HPI um, index. So that's already part of it. So either way, you will be working um, if you're selected with an organization that either is headquartered, works with, or serves um, the lowest 25% of the HPI index. If you'd like to bring someone in to assist and help develop the project, but you haven't worked on projects together in the past, how do you propose approaching the artist statement, marketing materials, et cetera? Would it be best to showcase what each person's individual philosophy slash work and what they're bringing to the team or approach it as a unit? That's a great question. Um, Sergio, do you have any thoughts on that? I'm gonna think about that for a second of what might be better. Because I, I'm almost tempted to say both, because I think it's important to say what each individual brings to the table, but also how you plan to work together. Yeah, I'm with on, I'm with Lisa on that because since the project is going to be one project itself, it will have to be cohesive. So it'll take basically both parts of like your individual philosophies and work and how that's going to basically translate into your overall project. So definitely trying to tie those two together would be the best. Good idea. All right, so it looks like we don't have any more questions. I'm gonna, oh, one more. Well, that's a good question, Ashley. Uh, let me get back, let me check in and find out if that's okay. So the question is, can you get a letter of recommendation from the Arts Council or would that be a conflict of interest? Um, I need to get back to you on that and check if that would be okay. So I'm going to stop recording. Um...